I'm going to show you how you can use some of these three switches that I have laid out in front of me. You can use them for all kinds of different cool different applications in your car or your boat or you know even in your house it applies to a switch is a switch you know a switch is a switch that's all it is but I got three different kinds I have this here is an AU46 it's a uh, mercury switch a little mercury in there a little mercury action also got this DEI this is a pressure switch probably never seen this one here these are cool I'm gonna show you what these guys can do and I also have a normally closed magnetic contact switch or a magnetic reed switch maybe you've seen these on pit my ride you know where the guy opens a trunk and then the whole car starts doing some crazy antics we're gonna use that too so basically what I got laid out here for you is just so we understand what's going on here on my little makeshift workbench is I got a multimeter <coughs> excuse me I have this little LED bar just to illustrate and let you know that the circuits are working, what they're doing, and when they are and when they aren't doing their functions. And I got the three switches. So, which one should we do first? Let's let's start with this guy. This here is the AU45. At least that's what we call it on our site. Now, what this thing is all about? Essentially, let's just say for a boat okay on a back door of a boat so you want to protect it so if someone opens up your door and steals your radio like they did to me last summer um, you can't really do much with the boat you can't put a pin switch because the room isn't allowable you don't want some ugly looking thing back there or something that could rust god forbid so something like this is ideal because these are all sealed up they're just plastic all it is is just a a magnet that's really all there is to it so there's nothing in here that can ever break and that's what we want okay so let's just make pretend we're going to use this switch and this this LED bar is going to be the alarm trigger input now on an alarm an alarm is going to have you know inputs for positive or negative inputs um, so we're going to connect this to the negative input on the alarm system that's what the alarm is going to be looking for it's going to see a ground signal it's going to cause the alarm to trigger and keep this idiot off your boat from stealing all your stuff what I what if I know now what I knew then I would have done this but who would ever thought you'd have to do that in your in your own boat nothing safe these days damn idiot if you're watching this video you idiot, turn it off and get the hell out of my face so what I'm gonna do disconnect the ground path on the circuit these two wires are just 12 volts coming from my um, power supply if you were wondering this one here is the constant 12 volts but on a switch application, you only need to switch one of the two wires. And in most alarm, at least, applications, it's always a ground. Okay? So what I'm going to do is take the half of the switch that gets wired. I'm going to take one, put it to ground. The other one is going to go to my LED bar. Now you see the light is on. The reason why is because this is called a normally closed switch okay this needs a magnet within its field to open the switch so once I put this close the light goes away okay so in your case say the door is open the alarm is, is sensing a negative input the door swings closed the circuit is open everything's happy until the idiot comes <whistles> that's the way it should work so that's how these work and this is a normally closed switch this is the kind of switch that I would recommend for that type of application um, these also come in the opposite which you which you call normally open so that way when this gets within range it'll close the circuit okay but that's the way this works as long as it's showing the ground when this is far away from that that's that's what you want that's the desired result so we're going to use a normally closed switch for this application and I'll probably throw up some links to these little items, so if you're looking to get your hands on some of them, or you can just shoot me an email, say, hey, man, what is that thing that you had? I'll be happy to share. I'm a helpful guy. This is it. It's an AU45. No big deal. Two little pieces. They even come with little sticky backs, so you can stick them on there. If you don't trust them like I don't, there's two little provisions for holes, so you can screw them right onto whatever you're screwing them onto, and they'll stay put for a good long time. So that's the magnetic reed switch. 
not bad right now we'll take a look at this one here now a mercury switch may look a lot of different ways some of them are encased in black where you can't see a darn thing some of them are a little cooler looking like this one here you know it's cool as far as a mercury switch goes you know it's not like looking at a woman or anything but you know inside there's a little ball of mercury so the idea is this when the switch is is mounted and adjusted let's just use um, a hood okay a car hood for an example now typically when you're driving your vehicle your hood is closed so it's going to be down in this position so the mercury is way down here and the two electrical contacts are over here so they're away from each other that's going to keep the circuit open just like how it was on the magnetic reed switch so just to illustrate I'm going to use my multimeter. My multimeter right now is set onto continuity. So when these two close a circuit and complete a circuit, you're going to hear that little tone. So like I was saying, if your hood is in the down position, this is going to be laying something like this, or actually it will be something like this because the screw is on the back. Now, when your hood is opened, there you go. Now, for the visual stimulation part of the video, I'm going to jam one of those in the ground. The other one will go to the light. Like a soul. Hood is down, hood is up. Pretty straightforward, right? That's how the Mercury switches work. And what's really cool about the Mercury switches is that they're self-encased. There's no water getting in this thing, no water get, no, no, nothing coming out of it, because Mercury is actually illegal in a lot of places. You can't really, you know, be running around with a jar of Mercury like we did when we were kids. We used to take it and play with it in our hands. You know, people kind of frown on that stuff now. They don't like this stuff in the waterways, and I wouldn't like it in my water either. But a mercury switch never never fails, unlike a pin switch, which can corrode, break, become maladjusted, you know, rust, or just get generally ugly and old. Mercury switches, you put it in once, and it works forever. So that's your mercury switch. I'm a big fan of the mercury switch. And that, by the way... We sell that thing too. That's this is like the Omega AU46. I don't know if I said that, but that's what this one is. My favorite one, and they're cheap too. They're only like five or five and change. Now here's something else. This is something I just recently started to get, and I've actually used one for myself. Like I was telling you before. I don't know why I'm telling you this stuff, but my my boat got broken into last year. I was having a nice time with my wife, all alone, living it up. I'm sitting in my hotel room. The guy at the marina calls me up. He says, hey, Martin, guess what? I said, what? He says, your boat's all messed up. Your bimini's all cut up. Your radio's missing. Your GPS is gone, and this is gone, and that's gone, and everything else is gone. It ruined my whole vacation. You know, just seeing a grown man cry. All over some idiot. If I had things like this, these problems could have been avoided. But like I said, you, you know, you try to trust people and think people are going to do the right things in life and whatever. That's another story. Um, now this here is a pressure switch. It's a little flat little guy. And what it is, let's just say for my case, again, the bad guy, if he jumps on and my back door... Magnetic switch would have failed, say, just for instance, or if the guy was feeling acrobatic and jumped over the door and jumped in, if I didn't have a, a proximity or a radar sensor or some other kind of sensor to detect the motion, which I probably don't because water sets those things off, so in a marine application it's not really very feasible, but what's not, what's not going to happen is the guy is not going to walk, he's going to put his foot down, and when he does, presses on this pressure switch and voila, that's another way to get a good trigger. And it doesn't really take a lot of pressure. The only trick is to hide this thing. I mean, I was thinking 
to actually take something like this and now on my on back, back area there's a gigantic like hatch door that you have to lift up to access the engine bay this would be perfect to go if you lifted up the door and you stuck this right in between so that way when he comes in he puts pressure on that entire area which is generally about eight and a half feet by about four that's a big space you know he's stepping on that thing and when he does boom that's a that's a guarantee shoe in so for me something like this would work and this actually might be working pretty good for a lot of people so this is a pressure switch and again it's shrunk wrap it's not exactly water waterproof it might be water resistant maybe if you threw a little liquid electrical tape on there or something like that but but hey you know what I could probably deal with replacing it once every five years or so just for the peace of mind what it'll give me and that's how it'll work so there you go that's the pressure switch mercury switch and the magnetic contact switch so there you go if you need one of these things let us know we'll get you one